Well, it's a glorious morning, 8th of February 2020, and this morning there is going to be a, a sort of protest or a demonstration at Teamworth Beach. A line of people they're hoping to gather enough to make a line are going to represent the part of the beach, part of Teamworth Beach, that's going to be taken by the proposed new sea wall. Um, that's going to happen beyond Spray Point, which is what's seen there, and uh, heading off towards Teamworth. This is Parsons Tunnel, this is Holcomb Beach, Parsons Tunnel just there, emerging from Is it Parsons or Clark Point? Anyway, there's the Parson. No, that's not the Parson. That's the point, anyway. There's the tunnel, there's the rock revetment, there's the viaduct, Holcomb water coming down beneath, I think, somewhere. Um, and there's the wall, the subject at the moment of quite some controversy. Originally, the plans that were revealed to me in 2016, and I had to ask the engineer to repeat them because I was so dumbfounded, because they seemed so outlandish, was to divert the railway within Parsons Tunnel and emerge from the rock face there to the right of it and have a completely new sea wall pretty much where I'm standing. That has since been reined in. to a lesser scheme which involves now building a rock fall shelter immediately beyond the tunnel for a short distance, 12 yards. The pillbox, that little pillbox stuck in the rock, which has survived, will go, I think. The revetment will be changed and from here onwards will be a new seawall which will completely block the view of the viaduct and the access to the beach will be down a ramp, up a ramp down another ramp, I think. Quite, um, quite extensive in itself, and it will take quite a bit of the beach. Not as much as the original scheme, but certainly a substantial amount, which is causing the Holcomb residents who think of this as their, and rightly think of this as their amenity, um, are in a tizzy over it. We're actually now at, I think, almost low tide, which is why the event has been timed um, for about now. I don't imagine they could have um, thought that they would get such a, a day as this. You couldn't ask for much better in February. It's actually quite warm. So there's Spray Point in the distance. There are the cliffs which are now the subject of the uh, scheme really. The sea is considered to be the lesser threat here so the idea of moving the wall out further is a defence against the cliffs and they don't see the sea as being an, an additional threat. And the new sea wall, which would have gone straight across, I think, uh, to Spray Point, will now follow the existing wall to about where the train is and then veer out, take in the whole of Spray Point and then curve back into Teamworth at East Cliff. Here we are now on the uh, walkway, looking back towards Parsons and the rock revetment and the little pillbox and the sheer cliff above and Smuggler's Cove, which would once have been a little inlet hidden from the excise men, I think. The Team Valley camera has mufflers on now, so I'm hoping they will reduce or eliminate the wind noise, but uh, I will not know until I get to upload this. So the, the new sea wall would only be a short distance out, nothing like what was originally proposed, and would diverge again halfway between here and Spray Point, I think, or two thirds of the way um, from Spray Point. Certainly Spray Point will go. There will be no Spray Point as such, except within the sea wall and there will be a, a walkway and also they're promising a walkway which will extend from Smugglers 
cove here inland. That's one of the selling points, they say, of the scheme. The slewing of the railway seaward will allow for a path all the way from smugglers to a footbridge, a new footbridge at Sprague Point. Uh, not beyond that because there won't be room. And I think it will also be a network rail access road, of course it will. If these mufflers aren't working, none of this will be intelligible because there's enough of a wind that I know without them would have been enough to black, long, black out, block the, the whole um, narrative. Here we are, probably at about the point at which the wall would start to diverge um, from the existing and make its way out towards the outer reaches of Spray Point. Um, I've come down these steps because this is the tow armour that was installed to prevent scouring of the foundation of the wall, which is actually on the same friable sandstone as the cliffs and is very susceptible without sand cover and without this concrete armour to being scoured and undermined. In the last 20 years or so, um, possibly more recently, um, these catch fences have been installed, which are pretty ugly, but they must be effective. I have actually seen them bent over and they've been... No, that was that big fall. They did actually just completely collapse, so that was more than they were designed to do. Um, attached to them, I believe, are telltale devices, which are triggered by the slightest movement uh, to give warning to network rail and to the signalling system. I think I would imagine they are linked to the signalling system. They are on the fence posts and also on the cliff. The network rail representative at the Holcomb meeting told me that they hadn't detected any movement, whereas I thought I'd heard that they had. Slightly. Now there's some activity down on the beach and it looks like they're marking out where the line will go, in which case I was wrong. It goes out further than I thought, or at least it's already further out than I thought. I didn't think they were going to do this today. I thought they were just going to do straight point to team, but I think that's probably the only part they can do with the human chain, but just to take advantage of the occasion, I think this is what they're, they're doing with these flags. There was some chatter on the Save the Beach um, mug hook page about the existing wall not being maintained and there being some neglect of the whole works really partly justifying the amount of work they had to do in the future anyway they they kicked up a, a fuss they wrote they wrote and they wrote and they contacted the boss of network rail and finally these works I think it was they were on about are being done on a Saturday Nothing of any great significance, but um, I think there had been some some clear deterioration in the wall, and it's now being dealt with. And to the toe, by the look of it. And this is Spray Point an outcrop of rock which was left behind by the railway and made into a feature and very fond Tynmouth people are of it Tynmouth people are of it there were once tea rooms here I think on the outer edge of uh, Spray Point with Thatcher Rock Abercrombie, the Ness, Teamworth here. And this is where the railway would be. Standing here it becomes quite outstanding what they propose. Teamworth people hadn't woken up to what was planned 
to begin with, they've certainly come to now. Judging by this assembly, which is still mustering, I think. It's before 11, and they were told to assemble at East Cliff at about 11, so I don't think this is all of them by any means. And they've yet to stretch out to form a human chain, and it looks by the numbers I can see that that will be possible. So here we are again on the edge of Spray Point, not quite the edge. There's the Parson and Clark. And the railway will take this entire beach and curve back to join the existing alignment on the East Cliff Bridge there. These are the cliffs, hardly any room between the catch fence and the base of the cliff. which are the highest. These are certainly among the highest. And here we are within the spray point of the famous Teamoth welcoming name. Been there since I was a child. They're planning on moving it inland to satisfy locals. Well, there's nothing they do about the cliffs there. There's just no room, so the railway still has to travel beneath those cliffs, the East Cliff. Whether they're considered to be as unstable, I don't know. And what they say is that these cliffs can globally fail in a sort of rotational manner, and they would sweep everything in their path, so those who claim that they can build a rock fall shelter here are wrong, they say, because it would go with it, the whole lot would go. There is no base on which to build it. Most can be seen, I would say, as far as light reaches to the eye, but I would think the camera certainly picks it up at Sandy Bay, which can be seen the caravans above the cliffs, the red cliffs of Sandy Bay, Axmouth. It's easy to forget that uh, the uh, Lime Bay is actually very large. It extends, I think, all the way from Stark Point to Portland. So we certainly can't see anything but a fraction of that. And one wonders, despite what the coastal engineers and the experts of this sort of thing say, um, what interfering with this little bit of it, the effect of what they plan to do will have on the whole, or certainly a larger area than, than the what's in, in the plans, what's going to happen to the sand, what's going to happen to the rock, what's going to happen to the currents. They can only model and guess gauge. And I think that's one of the things that these people are on about. There are people locally who seem to understand what goes on, where the sand goes, how it behaves, and all that might be badly interfered with by these proposals. But there's one thing that can be said about this wall, we know how this has affected over nearly 200 years now, uh, the situation as it is. I notice in the bay, and it is in the bay, the freighter is at anchor. And I'm wondering if it's going to be there for the, the next few days to ride out the storm that's coming in. It's on its way across the Atlantic. And it's due here tomorrow, so whether that captain master has decided to 
ride it out in Lime Bay, which is a favourite shelter. I don't know. Spray point from beneath. beneath. Oh, significant damage and neglect. You see, although well, still substantially sound. Evidence of repairs as well. I'm not quite sure where the railway will go, whether it comes right out to the... I think it does, but not. that's not the worst of it. The fact that at this point, and for some way either side, the railway will be defended by a new rock armour, which will take most of this. There will hardly ever be any beach here. And the reason I'm told is because there's deeper water offshore, and the wave action is greater here at this point. And so it wouldn't, wouldn't be enough to have a wave return wall has to be defended by rock armour to soften the waves up. In fact, it's not strictly a sea wall behind it, it's a, it's a, it's a freestanding wall that relies on the uh, defence of the, the armour the rock. Well, I said to the network rail, or I said to a network rail representative at the Langston Cliff launch in 2016, I asked, asked him whether he was expecting a backlash from local people and he shrugged his shoulders. And uh, that for some time didn't appear to be materialising and I wondered where it had got to, whether the local people were asleep. But um, they've woken up, I think, to what is going to happen here and uh, mustering in strength in a very British way, very peaceful, very reasoned and very visual. I hadn't realised that the people standing at an angle to the beach, down to the water's edge, actually represent the start of the rock armour. So that's as far as the human chain will come. So the bulk of people stretching back to Teenmouth represent the new wall and the line of people down to the water's edge is where the rock armour will start. So there it is. The people are out in force and now dispersing and have shown on the ground exactly what it will look like. It's a bit of an understatement to say that the breakwater is in poor condition. Perhaps this is what people talk about. The neglect that claims happened preparatory to this scheme being brought forward. But this has been in this state for a very long time, so perhaps the breakwater isn't important. It does show you the power of the sea, those concrete slabs once sat on top of this very small brick. People in the distance, I think, are doing their best to represent the point of divergence and the tide is coming in there and that's the best they can do I think. People in the distance probably represent the place where the wall will come out from the existing and the rest are just about getting past. If they are all from Holcombe that will have been a very good turnout. Well, I suspect many are from Teenmouth and will be making their way back again. This wasn't planned I don't think but I think the stewards have done their best to marshal them while they're here or while they were on the other side of Spray Point to do this. I suspect there may be a rerun of this. This protest is going to run, I think.